The African Youth, Indigenous Leaders and its partner organizations in South Africa and abroad have described South Africa's ambassador to Denmark, Zinzi Mandela, as warm, loving, free-spirited person who was also vocal in what she believed in. Zinzi Mandela died on Monday morning in a Johannesburg hospital and was laid to rest in four ways north of Johannesburg yesterday. Now, to further this discussion of Mandela Day, we joined via Zoom by African Young Leaders Chairperson, Kosazana Nikiwe Bam. Thank you very much uh, for coming to our program. Uh, thank you so much for honoring us and uh, also giving us the opportunity to pay tribute to Nkosazana Uzenze Mandela. Well, as the world celebrates Mandela Day, uh, it must feel different to do something charitable when it's dangerous out there due to the risk of contracting COVID-19. So what comes to your mind when there's a lot to do, as in the words of Nelson Mandela, when there's human suffering, there's a lot to do. But you need to do this. But it's not safe out there, and you have to look over your shoulder so that you don't contract COVID-19. You know, like, doesn't it feel different to you? Yes, on this day, it feels uh, really different because we, we're supposed to be celebrating uh, Nelson Mandela and yet we are still mourning his daughter. So I think if more than anything for us, it, we can use this time also to reflect on both uh, Nelson Mandela and Mamuzinzi and what Mamuzinzi stood for, which is uh, fighting for the freedom of the country. But uh, what we obtained presently is political freedom, of which Mamuzinzi was starting now to fight uh, what you call spiritual freedom, because he was starting to remind us about who we are and um, celebrating our identity and our cultures and also connecting to our, to our roots through, through spirituality, of which that is what um, most of us as indigenous people were actually looking up to, uh, to work with her and to revive Africans and also to liberate uh, the, Af the African traditional leaders who uh, we believe that they were colonized and most of them have lost their cultures and as custodians of our culture and traditions, we believe that Mamuzinzi could have played a major role in liberating and decolonizing our traditional systems as well, which is the freedom that we need currently after we have obtained the political freedom. So what do you make out of her life, especially when she had to grow up under the circumstances of uh, being, you know, under the spotlight due to her father and mother? And, and how does this relate to young people in politics who have to grow uh, through the ranks and to be where she was eventually when she, uh, you know, succumbed to her untimely death? What do you think, uh, you know, young people should do when they look up to her and for her life as well to be the Zinzi Mandela that we know today? I think as young people, we need to, to continue with the struggle. We need to fight and we need to walk on her footsteps. And we should not stop fighting for our liberation as, as black people. And uh, I have seen most of her videos because during that time I was, I was not yet born. I think even in 1985, when she was delivering the speech in Soweto, I was maybe still a few months born as a person that was also born in 1984. So we are, we are born when Nelson Mandela was also in prison and uh, Mamu Zinzi was also uh, fatherless and he, even so her mother also got arrested. So she had to live and, and fight and get trained of which I think as young people, we need to, to, to fight as well. And we need to continue with that because we can see that we are not yet free in the country. There's still so much uh, things going around. There's still so much uh, suppression. Uh, upper, um, apartheid has not yet ended, and racism and all those things that the show are starting to be vocal about, and of which it's not getting nicely to other people, as she was uh, referring to most people as apologists. So we should not be apologetic about uh, claiming and uh, being proud of who we are as young people, and we should continue with her fight uh, to free our minds and to free our spirits because everything now remains in our minds because we are still enslaved in our minds and we are still not yet free.
When it comes to uh, a person who is outspoken and not apologetic at all, uh, we, we can just uh, look at her live and ask the question, what about speaking your mind when you know that people will differ with you? Say, for example, when you have to call a spade a spade regarding the issue of land, when you belong to an organization that is a broad church and there could be different views with regards to you know, uh, the issue of the land. And when it comes to women issues as well regarding being sidelined or undermined or not being overlooked, whether when it comes to uh, certain senior positions of power. Okay, there's a saying that says uh, truth speakers have no friends. And I, I think uh, right now, regardless of who you are and what position you hold, if you speak the truth, you must speak the truth and you should not care what happens after because these are the things that are holding back even now our, free, our freedom because people are always looking at what they're going to get uh, or... If, for instance, they are speaking out, then they're going to lose their jobs. So we have seen it with Uma Muzinzi after she has tweeted about being landless and people that invaded and, and took our land. And now we have to apologize to them and create peace, but they are not, they are not apologizing for doing that to our ancestors, for, for their brutality. Because even when they came to introduce religion, they were brutal about it. They said, you must accept their Jesus. And they were beating and killing our ancestors who were not uh, accepting that. So we, we know that if you speak the truth, you have no friends. And we should not care about that. We must always uh, be who we are and, and speak the truth at all times. Because now the new generation does not know the, the history does not know what happens in Soweto 1976. Like when you speak to the children of today, they are going to tell you about Serafina and that uh, there's this one who was there and who was killed. They are all talking about the characters of the movie because they are not told exactly what happened. And we know that our leaders fought for freedom, but others, they actually sacrificed some of those that were really fighting for the struggle. So we should stand up and, and speak out and also go to those people that are willing to share the true stories of the struggle and we learn from that. All right. Thank you so much for making time to speak to us on this Mandela Day. And of course, uh, we're looking forward to the Nelson Mandela lecture this afternoon. And of course, uh, enjoy your day. Thank you so much. And thank you to SAPC for giving us the opportunity to pay tribute to Mamu Uzin Mandela. And we promise that we are going to work on her footsteps and we are going to liberate our, our indigenous leaders. Should it be they are not willing to liberate themselves? Thank you so much. All right, you're most welcome. Royal People Development Services uh, founder, uh, Princess Nikiwe Bam, uh, speaking to us uh, there about the tribute to Zinzi Mandela on Mandela Day.